Hello, welcome back. In this video I just wanted to touch on the importance for me in particular, and I believe it's so for other people on the spectrum, to have a large, a proportionally large amount of their time in solitude, i.e. having time on their own. Um, I've always found solitude to be very comforting, the exact opposite of what neurotypical people feel when they're on their own. Neurotypical people when they're on, apparently, you know, they feel a longing to be with other people, in other people's company, to have interactions and communications, uh, and feel isolated and alone and depressed. Um, all of those things couldn't be further from the truth to somebody with Asperger's. Um, it's something that an awful lot of the time I positively crave and seek out is solitude um, and it's not the easiest thing to do when you're in a relationship or you're living with a family um, or you're a busy person with a full-time job finding that solitude apart from when you're alone in your own thoughts at night asleep you know can be difficult to to find um, it's always been something that has um, never bothered me, being on my own. When I was a kid, I alluded to in one of the earlier videos, I would spend all my summer holidays on my own, pretty much, in my bedroom, amusing myself, playing with Lego or Meccano or cars, and I would do that for hours and hours on end, for days and days on end, for weeks on end and it didn't bother me. It, the opposite, like if I was to go out in the big wide world, um, that bothered me. Um, as an adult, I have learned that these things have to be done in moderation. Clearly you can't expect to have a relationship or you know, live with other people and spend all your time on your own with no interactions. So, as part of my routines, I consciously factor in times of the day that I'm going to have to myself, that I can be alone, where I'm not going to be interrupted, and I can have those little patches of solitude that I crave. Um, normally first thing in the morning, the drive into work obviously, I'm on my own. I'm for the first like, three quarters of an hour before I start work, I'll put my headphones on and I will zone out and I will not talk to anyone. Um, so that's the first part of the day that I, that I get my solitude. And then at dinner times, I'll do the same thing for an hour. I'll put my headphones on and I will just fill my head with my special interest and just switch off from work and from everything else that's going on around me, trying to like pre press the reset button. And then I get an hour on my own when I drive home, which never used to be the case. I used to share a lift with other people and in recent years, I've gone back to um, comm um, commuting on my own, and I'm a lot happier for it. I get that decompression time on the journey home. I can do videos like this. I can listen to podcasts. Um, I can listen to music. Sometimes I just don't have to listen to anything. I just try and just forget everything that's just gone on from the, from that day so then I'll get home and then I will have like an hour a minimum of an hour to myself for my special interest which is um, part of another video we did on special interests um, and that I combine that with my you know my solitude time 
so throughout the day on a on an average day I'll try and get like three hours on my own where I haven't got to interact with anybody um, and that kind of makes for an average day if I don't get that I will be a little bit narky irritable because I haven't got that solitude time um, and in holidays and things like this if my partner's not there at work or I will spend the whole day on my own doing my special interests and absolutely think that is the most wonderful day I've ever had really weird I don't seek I, I don't care if I don't speak to another single person for the whole day for a whole weekend I don't care if I don't leave the house for a whole weekend um, and that often happens I don't even leave the house no need to do it I only ever leave the house if I have to I'm not agoraphobic uh, one of the other yeah, one of the other times I now get my solitude time and it's the best of all solitude time is through my photography um, obsession and every Sunday I will get up at anywhere between 2.30am and 4am and I will travel to a, a pre-decided destination for um, before sunrise so I can photograph before sunrise and during sunrise and that time that I get there on my own, that is absolutely magical. And it's even more magical to me now because it gets me out of the house and it gets me in the countryside, it gets me seeing the wonderful things this country has to offer. And that's made me a lot happier since I've been doing that. Um, I don't care about getting up early. Um, it's pretty much all I fixate on for the whole week anyway, is that one day of the week. Where I'm going to get out and I'm going to spend a day doing photography and I'm going to have the first part of that day completely on my own in some of the most beautiful places in my area. Um, that's really special to me now and it's going to be difficult if I ever have to give that up or if that ever changes. But the thing I wanted to make people who are I suppose and talking about this is that don't get offended or upset if you know your your partner or your friend or your family member with Asperger's wants time on their own. It's not don't think it's unhealthy for them. Don't try and be a person that decides they've got to intervene and they've got to get this person out and about. They need that time. It can yeah, okay, I, I, I will agree it can be taken too far, um, I suppose, and you can, you, can be, you can become a recluse. But someone with Asperger's won't get depressed over it. You know, they, it's, 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 they will enjoy that time on their own and that solitude. Um, yeah, just thought it'd be good for people to know that people, people, people with Asperger's positively seek out that time to themselves and that solitude time and it is I would say in my world it's pretty much an essential thing that I have to squeeze into the day um, if I don't get it I get very stressed out and I get upset so yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing I just wanted to mention today to all you people, um, just to give you one more little insight. And the thing about these videos is that I'm hoping that I'm building up smaller insights into a bigger picture, because autism is different for everybody. Every person with autism has common traits with other people with autism, and they have specialist traits that other people might not have. Um, but what I would say is, it's very difficult to describe to somebody in a small amount of time what autism is or how autism shapes your life. It's a series of lots of different things over many different issues, very complex things that when 
the small parts are added together they create a larger sum and sometimes I feel really embarrassed when I try and describe my autism or Asperger's to people because I, I hear what I'm saying and it sounds quite trivial sometimes when you're when you're saying these things to people and they they just come across as like well that doesn't sound very bad at all you know this autism is not you know it, it's just people craving for attention um, or just a bit shy you know it's the sum of many things and to get that across and educate someone they re the person needs to put the effort in to understand these many things make a larger thing so thanks for watching once again and see you next time around bye